the Pacific Northwest. Beautiful, majestic, but with a mysteriously destructive force lying just beneath its surface. Washington State lies directly beneath the Ring of Fire, a circle that traces the continents and islands on the outer rim of the Pacific Ocean. These are populated with extinct and active volcanoes from New Zealand to the Alaskan wilderness. But a high concentration of these volcanoes reside in the Pacific Northwest and show a very active and explosive history in the not so distant past. Some mountains in the chain have completely disappeared in massive eruptions, such as the sites of Crater Lake and Newberry Crater in Oregon. Sleeping giants like Mount Rainier near Seattle and Mount Hood near Portland continue to keep scientists on guard. No better reminder of the potential for this ominous destruction was the awakening of Mount St. Helens in early 1980. What started with a few deep earthquakes below the mountain soon grew into signs of volcanic life when cracks in the summit snow appeared and a steam vent blew open a small fissure. More concerns arose when the north side began to bulge at a rate of five feet a day. Something dreadful was coming. On May 18, 1980, the event began with the largest landslide in recorded history as one side of the mountain gave way and unleashed a massive nine-hour eruption. A giant ash cloud followed and cities to the east were eclipsed by it in the middle of the day. After the ash settled, 57 people were dead. Hundreds of square miles of forests were destroyed. The Toodle River Valley was filled in up to 150 feet in mud and rocks for 14 miles. And the Columbia River was shut down to shipping traffic from ash and mud flows. The United States had never seen such destruction in its history. Eruptions have continued from 1980 to 1986, and 2004 through 2008 as the mountain attempts to rebuild itself as nature always does. With an event like this, people had no idea how long it would take before this area would return to normal. Some scientists estimated hundreds of years. But nature has a way of recovering more quickly than we first thought. Through massive tree planting efforts, as well as encouraging natural growth in the blast zone, Life has come back, and the recovery has been amazing. Hi, and welcome to Mount St. Helens 30 Years of Change. I'm Mark Hendricks. Over the next hour, we'll explore what happened here 30 years ago, its immediate aftermath, and the amazing changes that have occurred here since, some of them with a little bit of human help. A lot of people remember exactly what they were doing, the day the mountain erupted, May 18th, 1980. In fact, for many people who live within 500 miles of here, that moment is absolutely imprinted forever. Back before the eruption, these hills were covered with old growth timber. There were lakes here, cabins, youth camps. A lot of people thought this was paradise. The forest was absolutely gorgeous. And of course the lakes were, were beautiful because they were all cold, glacier fed. And the lakes and the rivers were just, uh, just pristine. You could go uh, along the Toodle River and where a stream comes into the Toodle, a little creek, and watch the steelhead go up those little creeks. Well, just a beautiful area and, and it's a chance, you know, to, a lot of city kids would come up during the summer and that was their first real experience. I'd been up there once, you know, and, and uh, I'd climbed it in 1978. And so I was sort of had seen the area around the volcano from the summit and, you know, obviously amazing for us. The beautiful grandeur of Mount St. Helens has drawn people for decades. As early as the late 1800s, local residents would come up for a leisurely drive through the massive old growth forests, first by horse, then by automobile. They would horseback ride and camp in the hundreds of square miles of this amazing outdoor wilderness. Eventually, summer cabins, lodges, and youth camps dotted the landscape, 
drawing visitors on a regular basis. During winter, adventurers would hike the mountain, then ski down its almost perfect slope. The more daring would ice hike, then camp at the top for an amazing view. The diehards started clubs for climbing and skiing, all for the enjoyment of spending time at the mountain. Anglers of all ages took advantage of large trout, and there was no better place to cool off than in the glacier-fed waters of Spirit Lake. It was a recreational wonderland. I remember one particular winter when we hiked into the Y Camp and stayed there for two or three days. It was a beautiful, beautiful area up here. My wife and I and kids spent days up here in this area. You could drive all day in the Weyerhaeuser Road system and the forestry roads and never see the same thing twice. Mount St. Helens beauty was a bit deceiving for it was a young volcano lying dormant beneath its pristine glacial peaks. Most of what the mountain we know today was built in the last 2,500 years. So it's very, very young, very active geologically. It has basically grown up since the last glaciation. So Mount St. Helens was a very smooth and symmetrical cone-shaped volcano, and very much like Mount Fuji in Japan. This area was prized for its recreation, for its great beauty, and also because it held some of the most valuable commercial timber on the planet. In fact, Weyerhaeuser's biggest parcel was just north of the blast zone. Nobody had a better appreciation for its value than Dick Ford, who is the superintendent of the land for Weyerhaeuser. I've been in the area my whole life, but after becoming a forester for Weyerhaeuser in 1970, uh, I became eventually a district forester. Mount St. Helens is, actually grows some of the best trees in the world. There's no other place in the world that has this amount of rainfall and these productive soils to grow Douglas fir. And it is the number one building wood in the world. This was uh, our largest district that we had anywhere in the world and Weyerhaeuser at the time had nearly 35 million acres. So that tells you how uh, large this was. When we return, the mountain begins to awake from its slumber. <laughs>